Coming up on 630 Point of View, another week and more heat on Chancellor Shervani. What's behind all the pressure to get him out? This lady was arrested in Oklahoma and faces numerous charges. We'll tell you what she did in the hot box. It's an interview with Dennis Rodman. You simply have to see to believe. The kid is awesome, but I think that his grandfather and his father built this whole thing up because he has to do this. He don't want to do anything. I know, that's what I know. Percy Harvin is no longer a Viking. Good news or some tough shoes to fill. All that and more, including some of your feedback, coming up right now on 630 Point of View. Hello and welcome to 630 Point of View Monday edition. I'm Robert Hahn. And I'm Chris Berg. What are you chuckling about? Because I watched that interview, all I can think about is going to some Korean barbecue in L.A. <laughs> wow. All right, before we get to that interview, we've got some other things to talk about. Chancellor Shervani meeting with some of the Board of Higher Education today, basically saying, look, I'm not micromanaging these guys. I don't know what's going on. Just trying to do my job. Your thoughts on all of this heat that this guy is getting? I think it's just a witch hunt. I mean, personally, I look at the situation. You look at Mr. Seaworth, who's the former general counsel who got fired by uh, Mr. Shivani and Mr. Espergard. You got that situation, Senator Tony Grinberg. I don't know how to say this, so that I'm almost embarrassed the way that North Dakotans are responding to this situation. I mean, it's like, look, if the guy's not doing his job, that's one thing. If you've got a personality conflict, that's a whole other thing. I've been through coaching changes. That's my perception. This is like a coach coming in saying, hey, you know what? We used to run the wishbone. We're going to switch to a West Coast offense now. And guess what, offensive coordinator? You're not going to just run the plays you want. There's some, going to be some accountability here. That's essentially what he's saying to the presidents of UND, NDSU, other presidents. At the end of the day, is what he's trying to implement going to make a difference for the students here in North Dakota? I think that's a good thing. Now, you have the uh, Higher Education Board's student representative, Sidney Hall, has alleged Shravani has created, quote, an environment of misinformation and distrust among students, presidents, administrators, and the legislators. Do you think that's a fair assessment of the job he's trying to do? Like what specifically? What's exactly. he talking about that's, specifically? Yeah, I, I mean, to make those kind of allegations, it's like Senator that's Grinberg, when he sits there and starts to go after President, I mean, excuse me, Mr. Shivani's leadership in his character in his uh, uh, press release from a while ago, and I said, hey, have you ever worked with Mr. Shivani? He goes, no. Well, how do you attack someone's character if you've never had a personal experience of that? That's a good question. So these allegations, again, which is all they are now, the opens meetings law, hey, was that maybe a violation? It could be. Could be. Mr. Shivani didn't have a meeting by himself. It took the Board of Higher Ed to obviously yeah. go through on those meetings. So you've got to look at this and go, wait a second, I can't just look at the person that's taken all the arrows. There's something behind the scenes here that's more to this. Yeah, and he's going to be meeting, uh, it looks like this board is meeting in May to discuss these allegations. That so actually this got changed. That's going to be this they Thursday they're going to do okay. because they know there's a lot more to this, I think, than meets the eye. But here's the, at the end of the day, you got to, okay, so what's the solution? What do we do? The Board of Higher Ed clearly is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. A lot of people don't realize these are volunteer positions. Yeah. I don't know anybody that can go out there and run a successful entity volunteering the entire time. I think you've got to start to pay people that are on the board, make this thing so it's a, a long-term investment, not just from a capital standpoint, but from a time standpoint. Typically, the president's there for a year. Yeah. Like, come on, you get in, you're just getting your feet wet and starting to understand the machination after a year. I think it should be a four-year stint. If you find people that are good at it, keep them in there longer, but start to build some momentum. It's 20% of our budget. We're sitting yeah. here screwing around with it. Good call. I don't get it. All right. Our neighbor to the south, South Dakota, recently passed a law called the School Sentinels Law, now signed by South Dakota Governor Dennis Dugard of who says the state's 152 school districts can decide whether they want to arm teachers and other employees or hire security guards or volunteers. Good idea, bad idea. I think it's a great idea. And what I love about it most is it boils down to the school district. This is not a statewide, yeah. hey, Robert, you have to have a gun in your school. This is, hey, school district, if you think this is a good idea, you can vote on it. It's got to be publicly voted upon. And if people in your school district like it, then you can go ahead and arm your teachers. Yeah, and the reasoning behind it is essentially they have a lot of these schools that are very rural and police response may be a little bit slower just because of their distance, especially if they need a lot of officers. And so this would give them that option uh, to uh, have some uh, armed guards or have the, the teachers themselves be armed. Do you think this could cause a problem sometime in the future? You get, what happens if you get a disgruntled teacher in that situation? That's someone that's already inside or am I just... 
overthinking this. I don't know this. all the details. If you remember, we had a gentleman on from Texas that allows his teachers to be armed. These people are well vetted. They go through regular checkups. I believe it was annually said where every single year they've got to go out there and you know get some kind of training, go through a psych test. So it's not just some random people that's getting a gun. And secondly, this is people that are asking him to say, hey, I do want to be one of those armed people. The other thing I liked about the program, I don't know if this is the same, but nobody knows who those armed teachers are. Obviously, it's conceal and carry. Mm -hmm. So you don't know who's got those weapons. And again, I think it's if you're vetting the people up appropriately and you know that, hey, we've got people that have got good mental health here, which I presume most teachers do. I think you would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. All right. Speaking of someone who does not have a whole lot of mental health, this is a lady in Oklahoma. And I don't know if we have her picture or not, but uh, this lady wanted to sell her two children for 4000 bucks to raise money for her boyfriend's bail money. What in the world is going on in this country when you start offering to sell your two kids for $4,000? Well, the thing they're not even mentioning is this is for child porn. I mean, this woman knew what these kids were gonna be used for. What I read, one of them was an 18-month-old child. The gentleman that was gonna do this heinous act was texting people. And you got to give, look, you and I beat up the FBI as of late. you yeah. got to give a bunch of praise to the FBI. The FBI guy acted as the masseuse that was getting these texts, and obviously they stepped in and did the right thing. But the guy was talking about, hey, I'm going to go out there and do just heinous things to an 18-month-old yeah. baby. I, I it's You've got a young girl. Appalling. I've got a young girl. It is more than appalling. All right. Coming up after the break, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how to describe it other than <laughs> interesting Bizarre, strange. Dennis Rodman was in town. I had a chance to sit down with him over the weekend. We're going to show you that interview coming up right after this. And as always, it's not too late for you to join in the conversation. There are many ways you can do so. They're all there on the screen. You can email us. You can head on over to our website. You can call us. And at that number at the bottom of the screen, you can either leave a voicemail or text us. Stay with us. My chat with Mr. Dennis Rodman right after the break. Welcome back to the 630 Point of View. Uh, joining me now is none other than Dennis Rodman. Mr. Rodman, thanks so much. How are you doing? Today. <laughs> first of all, I want to start. Is this okay. your first trip to North Dakota? Absolutely. What, what do you Absolutely. think of it so far? It's very consistent. Consistent, and guess what? The people are very nice. Very nice. Guess what? I always uh, do one thing, um, uh, motor rising mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I guess sturgeon. Yeah, guess what? How about you? You ride? I do not ride. No, not quite. <laughs> so, oh, you're good, man. <laughs> you're good. No, no, come on. It's a good interview. Come on. Yeah. Come on, man. Keep on going. Uh, come on, brother. What, what brings you up here? Let's start with that. Oh, my friend here, Floyd, uh, he booked me for like 12000 I said, oh, my God, am I cheap? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> am I cheap? My Lord, not no more. No. Guess what, Lee Dwayne? Yes. All right. Now you recently visited another northern state, North Korea, to, yeah, be, right. to be more exact. Right, do right. you do you can still consider Kim Jong Un just a 28 year old guy, not like his dad and not like his grandfather? Right. You know what? I saw some things, man, over there, man. That in my life right now, I've seen a lot of things in life, and people don't understand, man. Wow. When you go across the world, culture is good. Culture is good. It's refreshing your mind and do one thing. Everything's awesome. But it's like, wow, dude. It's like, oh, how do you explain what you see? How do you do it? Mm -hmm. Kids do it a lot. Because mm -hmm. they see and they talk what they see. I'm like, well, I'm very profound. It's awesome. It's, it's just awesome. And guess what? I don't, you know, I don't condone what he does, but he's my friend. How about okay. that? How about that? That's fair. Uh, also, uh, earlier this week, uh, Kim Jong-un, he's threatened the U.S. with a preemptive nuclear strike. Uh, he's also announcing that on March 11th, North Korea will abandon its ceasefire agreement with South Korea, which has been in effect since 1953. In your words, you said that, quote, he doesn't want to do war. Do you still stand by that? I sure do. I sure do. He doesn't want to do anything. And one thing my son over there said to him, he, guess what? We're here doing one thing. I didn't even try to meet the guy. The kid is awesome, but I think that his grandfather and his father 
built this whole thing up because he has to do this. He don't want to do anything. I know, that part I know. And it's, it's, it's just amazing, man. And you guys think this is real. And it's weird, dude. And you guys are, oh my God, ready, 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 ready. Do you, you've met him. I obviously haven't talked oh, to no him. Oh, no one, what, everyone, everyone what, knows, everyone knows I'm not the what, <laughs> what do you feel he does want to do? To get out, of the, he does wants, he, he want to get he, out of the shadow of no, his, his he, father? He, he wants to do one thing. And I wish I'd bring him over here. He was doing one thing. He wants to not fight. He asked me to tell Obama, please call me. That's all he asked. Call me. Why do you feel he's making these threats then if he doesn't? It, well, want guess, to guess fight? what? He's not doing it. Okay. Have you seen him do it? Is it his government? No, no. Have you seen him do it? I have not. No, no. Have you seen him do it? I have not. No one's ever seen him do it. It's all about what? And it's not about Korea, it's one thing, honey. Please, get it correct. Understand one thing. How's your family? My family's good. Cool. How's your family? It's good. How's your wife? I'm not married. Thank God. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, now you have been over there. You, yes. You're back here now. Do you anticipate going over there again? Yes, I will, in August. You are going over there? Yes, on vacation with him, yes. Now, have you have you talked to any of the government here about, hey, pick up the phone, call this guy. He, he but, wants to talk. No, no the, the one thing I think is very uh, politician-wise. Yeah. It's very like, you know, like, oh, dude, I don't do that, right? But it's like, it is sad, man, because, you know, I love people. I want people to be happy. And guess what? And you see the kid, guess what? He's always walking in front of people, always, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, he don't want to fight. He don't want to fight. Guess what? How you gonna kill the world? How you gonna kill the f***ing world? No. I'm sorry, guys. Blank that out. You're, <laughs> you're, you're all good. I think that's all the questions I have. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Huh? Anything else? Do you have sex with women? <laughs> this guy. Is... <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna end it right there. Again, Dennis Rodman, thanks so much for joining us. Thank I you. love things, bro. We'll I love things. It's all love. We'll have more point of view coming. Welcome back to 6:30 Point of View. I gotta get your your thoughts. I, I mean, I'm just waiting for you to answer that last question. Oh come on! Man. <laughs> I have a daughter. Let's. I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, yeah, that was one of the most strange, bizarre, yet at the same time most interesting interviews I've ever done. I mean, the guy. I did he? What did he say other than? He thinks Kim Jong-un is an awesome guy. Does that not disturb you as an American? Well, yeah, and then he's like, hey, I just want people to be happy. It's like, yeah. dude, do you understand what this guy's doing to the people of North Korea? How is that they're making them happy? They're, they're starving, you know? Dennis goes over there, he gets lavished with food and drinks and all this stuff, and he's got hundreds of thousands of people over there starving. He also just ended today the ceasefire with South Korea. He is threatened the United States with a preemptive nuclear strike, yet he's still an awesome guy. Why did we do the interview? Right there. I mean, that's how many of you guys have talked to Kim Jong-un? None of us have. Nobody in the cabinet has. Apparently the president hasn't. This guy has. That's why we did the interview, and that's why, you know, you we took advantage of a, the opportunity of him being in town. As a diplomat or an ambassador? I know, <laughs> but the, the point is... He has sat down with the guy. I haven't. You haven't. No, but I mean, let's be honest. And Rodman's an attention, you know what? I mean, well, that's of course all he, wants. he is. And so he sees this as a way. Hey, I can get back in the spotlight, make twelve grand to go up to Fargo, get some more paid, ex you know, exposure, and uh, sell some of my movies that are coming out. And and that's what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely not an ambassador. But uh, we'll have more on this. We've got uh, plenty of your feedback that is coming in. We'll have that coming up a little bit later on in the show. Some more uh, interesting news coming out of today. If you are a Vikings fan, you are now Percy Harvinless as he's heading out west to go play for the Seahawks. Your thoughts? Shocked. I mean, he's the one guy other than AP that actually had some production. You've got When a, he was healthy. Right, but I mean, just watch, too. In Seattle, these headaches are just going to magically disappear. You now really that he's think got so? Mr. Wilson at the helm. I do. I think that you're going to see a shift in him when you got Wilson throwing him the rock, you got Pete Carroll as his head coach. And you don't have Christian Ponder. I mean, Christian Ponder's a young QB. Who else does he have right now to throw the rock to? And the quarterback in, Saint, in Seattle is not a young quarterback? But he's legit. But he's, he's young. He's, 
I don't care. The guy, did, the guy played like a five-year veteran who took him to the NFC Championship and probably should have been in the Super Bowl. Probably should have been in the Super Bowl? If you would have won, a, yeah, a couple more plays here and there. I mean, Atlanta got <laughs> well, lucky. You dude. could say you that about how many games that. could you say that you about? Think, you think the Vikings just barely missed it last year? No, They're I'm not horrible. saying they barely missed. They made the playoffs. <laughs> okay. They got just as far as the Broncos. Okay. Speaking of the Broncos, their opponent in the playoffs, the Baltimore Ravens, they sent Anquan Bolden out to the 49ers, another young quarterback getting a, a receiver. I did not see that. Yeah. The good news is, though, with the money that Flacco is making, he can buy as many <laughs> receivers as he wants. So, yeah, do you, I, what do you think? I mean, the Vikings are getting a first-round draft pick, and also I believe it's a 20. No, it's number 25 overall in the first round. You think that's, that's the other thing? I look at the draft. I mean, who who is a great wide receiver right now that you can pick up in the draft that can even even come close to replacing Percy? Seattle's tough. They got Percy. They got Sidney Rice now on the outside. Yep. They got a great tight end. Obviously, you got that monster running back. I can't remember his name, but the guy was killing it in the playoffs. And you got Wilson. They're going to be a solid, solid team. And the Vikes. I don't know why not just pay Percy. I don't know. Too late now. <laughs> He's packing up. What's going and on? And headed west, and so is a. Uh, Anquan Bolden, but again, Flacco will take care of them in Baltimore. Hey, stay with us. We're going to have lots of your feedback, including some feedback on the Rodman interview. And as always, it's not too late to join in that conversation. All the ways you can join in right there on your screen. You can email us, Facebook us. You can text us at that number on the bottom of the screen. You can also leave a voicemail at that same number. Stay with us. Lots of your feedback coming up right after the break. I don't know about you guys, but any time the week starts after daylight savings time, I have trouble waking up. I could have used <laughs> perhaps one or two of those methodologies, but man, it's just, I don't know what it is. It takes me like a week or two to get used to daylight savings time. How about you? It does. It's just a little bit strange, and it's going to be even interesting as you and I are going to walk out tonight. I think there's still going to be a little bit of light out. You're going to be oh, like, yeah. What's going on here? It's well, maybe when you leave. Forever. But. <laughs> All right, moving on. We've got some of your feedback. We're going to start with this one in terms of the Rodman interview. It says, honestly, why waste time on such an interview? Very unprofessional. And he doesn't seem to represent himself or his family very well. And he is also rude and not governmentally intelligent whatsoever. I didn't feel I was unprofessional at all in conducting the interview. And again, I will stand by the fact that I haven't talked to Kim Jong-un and you haven't talked to Kim Jong-un and this gentleman has, and I use that term loosely, but <laughs> Mr. Rodman has. That is the bottom line of why we wanted to talk to him as to someone who has talked to Kim Jong-un and he stands by his, he thinks he's awesome. All right, moving on. LMAO, that was priceless. I wonder how many people around here actually understood him. Bravo. Yeah. I mean, I understood most of it, most of it, and I was sitting right there. But I, again, he was here in town. He's been to North Korea. He's going back, apparently. Maybe we'll talk to him again when he comes back after his retreat in August. I don't know. We'll see. Moving on. Are they trying to get rid of Shervani so Tim, I don't know how to pronounce that last name, Flackle, Flackle can have the job? Tim was in the running in the initial situation when Shervani was also up. So I don't know why now they're all of a sudden saying, hey, wait a second, let's get rid of Shervani to bring Senator Flackle in. I obviously would love to see somebody from North Dakota take this gig. Why yeah. we continue to go outside of the borders of North Dakota when we all know this is a unique community, unique culture. Uh, I don't know if Senator Flackle is that guy, but it'd be great to see somebody step in from North Dakota. Do you think that's part of the underlying cause? I was talking with someone in the newsroom earlier today that said, hey, this guy is from outside of North Dakota. Do you think that's why he's getting a lot of the... I think a little bit just because he's got a different personality. I mean, you and I both lived out of this area. Yeah. There's some people that are very abrupt. You go to New York, they want you to be abrupt and correct, you know, just a little bit more harsh, if you will. 
and that's the rumors I'm hearing about his personality. I have not had that experience of him whatsoever. But again, North Dakota, let's get over ourselves. If the guy's going to help us win and help kids get better education, big deal if he's got a yeah. rough personality. Exactly. All right, moving on. This one is also regarding Robin. It says, who cares about him? He's a loser and just wants to be back in the famous light. I think that's part of it. But I think he legitimately feels... In his mind, he feels that Kim Jong-un just does want to not be like his dad. And, and he even said to you, he's like, well, has he done this? Has he done yeah. Well, yeah, the guy just wrecked the, uh, said, hey, we're going to have a preemptive strike on the U.S. Yeah. We just took care of the 1953 peace treaty with South Korea. But, so, again, but he I'm, is taking But I'm saying, I'm saying, in Rodman's mind, he likes people to be happy, and he, I think he thinks the same for Kim Jong-un. That may be completely way off base, but I think that's what Mr. Rodman believes, and that's why... He has this taken is, the stance that he has. That's why this is called point of view. Exactly. We a different point All of view. right. Moving on. Another one. Can't understand anything Rodman said. Again, you know, I understood most of it. I mean, you can go back and listen to it again, and you can understand most of what he is saying. It, was he again, it was, I mean, he, he had been using... Do what? Alternative substances. Had he been using alternative substances before that interview? I, that I don't know. That's a good question, though. All right, regarding Rodman, it says, why waste your time interviewing such a loser? I think they meant waste, W-A-S-T-E, in that instance, but I don't think it was a waste of time. It's got a lot of people talking. It's got you talking about it. It's got you talking about it. Everybody here in the station was watching that. It's got people engrossed. Hey, take it for what it is. I mean, the guy has talked to Kim Jong-un, and I think he firmly believes in his mind that Kim Jong-un is just trying to be But did you really get anything out of that interview of value? That he believes that Kim Jong-un <laughs> is. All right, we're running out of time. What do we got tomorrow? Coming up tomorrow, quick. North Dakota State Tax Commissioner Corey Fong joins us. All right, thanks so much for joining us. And as always, it's not too late to join the conversation. We will see you tomorrow on 630 Point of View.